Hello everyone this is Void Spirit. I'm here to bring you guys amazing fanfiction that you will surely enjoy. But before we start please subscribe and like the video for more amazing content. CH.14. Chloe O. Bell a few years before Rimuru decided to reincarnate. A beautiful girl with black hair was waiting for someone, it was Chloe. Chloe was nervous. She was always super attached to Rimuru and always tried to go on something romantic with him, but always Shuna or Sheehan would arrange an emergency meeting for Rimuru, making him miss his date. But a few days ago Rimuru felt bad for Chloe who was always left alone and called her for a date. He didn't plan anything romantic. He just wanted to make it up to Chloe. So Chloe was nervously waiting for him for a date. He arrived. He was in his normal form where he looks to be around 20 years old just like Chloe, he was in his luxurious black clothes, and Chloe was in a beautiful white dress. Hi Chloe. Hi Rimuru san. Rimuru was a little embarrassed because Chloe looked so beautiful and she gave a beautiful smile and approached him when she saw him. So you said you had an idea where we could go. She spoke wanting to get rid of the embarrassment. Ah, yes, come with me. Rimuru stopped staring at Chloe's beauty and regained his senses opening a portal. They passed through the portal. They were in a luxurious restaurant. The architecture was well defined with red and black colors. There was no one in the restaurant, just them and the staff. They were guided to a table by the window and Chloe saw it. Is that the city? They were floating above a lake that was close to the city? Yes, yes, this is the first flying restaurant of all. I asked us to be the first to eat here and they let us. Did you like it? Hum. She gave a beautiful smile as she nodded. Damn she's really very cute. I didn't want to do anything romantic on this date, but she's really very beautiful. I'm going to have to make an effort. They sat down at a table for two near the window. This table meant that they sat in the same seat next to each other. Rimuru asked her if she would prefer another, but she said she liked this one. The waiter arrived and they ordered what they wanted. Chloe was sitting by the window looking out at the city with a fascinated expression. It's really beautiful. She spoke as she looked out. Rimuru was standing next to her admiring the beautiful face of Chloe who was fascinated by the city. It is really beautiful. Chloe looked at Rimuru and realized that he was not talking about the city. She looked away with red cheeks and approached him in the accent. Rimuru realized he was staring and looked away embarrassed as well. Here you go. The waiter came over and handed them their plates. Thank you very much. The two ate while talking for two hours. Chloe talked about many of her adventures as a hero and Rimuru listened with great interest. He also told some of his adventures that Chloe didn't know about and when he got to the story of a colorful world where the sea was lilac and the grasses were white Chloe was fascinated. Chloe spoke excitedly as she thought about the description of the world. So. Do you want to go there sometime? Chloe was surprised. She showed a hopeful expression and asked. Can I really? Yes we could go there on our next date, what do you think? Chloe was overjoyed at the idea of a second date and happily agreed with a beautiful smile. She also hugged Rimuru's arm making her breasts touch him. Damn, I asked her on a second date. I think I'm totally hypnotized by her. Ah, she's so beautiful eating cake. Well, now there's nothing else to do since we're going on another date anyway. They started some more and Rimuru took her back home and as they did so Rimuru unconsciously held her hand when they were in front of her house. Well I had a great time Chloe, me too Rumuru san. He said this and realized that their hands were joined. Ah. Sorry about that. Fufu don't worry about it, I was very happy. She tilted her face and spoke happily, er, really? Good then. Rimuru scratched the back of his head in shame. Without realizing it their faces came very close together as they exchanged these words. Rimuru and Chloe looked each other deeply in the eyes and Rimuru began to bring his face closer together with his eyes closed. He was very nervous because he had never done that before, but still. He gave Chloe a kiss and she was overjoyed after they parted. Her cheeks were slightly flushed, her eyes opened in surprise and her finger was on her lips. Rimuru thought that since she hadn't said anything he had done something wrong and apologized. Air sorry, it's just that I thought that. No, it's all right Rimuru-san. I. I really liked it, she clarified. Really? Well since that's the case I guess we'll have to have a second date. Yes. The two said their goodbyes and headed home. On their third date they went to another luxurious restaurant and Rimuru asked Chloe to go steady, she accepted immediately. 
They never did anything more than kiss. Why did Rimuru say he had to convince Seal to give him a son? If it was someone else he would probably find it strange for someone to talk to his own ability. But Chloe also had an ability with a personality. Kranoa then to her was normal. The most they did was Rimuru put his hand here or there and they went to take a bath together, with Rimuru in slime form. Today it was one year since they had been dating and Rimuru said he wanted to show Chloe something. Rumuru san. She approached happily in a super luxurious red dress. They kissed and he held her hand as they went through a portal. After the portal was a huge vacuum. It was as if they were in space, but you couldn't see any stars. You could only see something shining in the distance. Rimuru san what is that? Chloe asked half startled. Don't worry, there's a barrier around it. It took me a while to do this, but here it is. This is the birth of a universe, the real big bang. Look it's going to start. And it began. That point of light spewed everything out. It was so beautiful it can't be described. When it was over there was only a small bluish crystal left where the point of light had been before. Chloe was looking at the new universe that had just been created, fascinated. Rimuru approached the blue crystal and stored it in the separate space. This is the rarest and one of the most beautiful materials in existence. It can only be created with the birth of a new universe. And what use is it? Chloe curiously tilted her head in a cute way. Nothing, he's just pretty. So you created a universe just to have a pretty rock? Well, sort of. Ah, Chloe put your finger here. He handed her a small colorless pearl that could fit on the tip of her finger. Chloe put her finger in and felt her mana being sucked out. The pearl was gaining some color, but before Chloe could see it Rimuru pulled the stone into the imaginary space. Hey. I wanted to see. Chloe stewed her cheeks and crossed her arms wanting to see the beautiful pearl after it gained color. Don't worry, I'll show you when I'm ready. Trust me. Okay. Chloe always trusted Rimuru no matter what. Okay. Let's go to the next place. He pulled her hand away as he stepped through the portal. They were in the colorful world. A field of white grass from where you could see the purple sea and the blue sunset. Brumaru san. Why are we here? When we saw the sunset on our second date you said this was your new favorite place remember? So I thought it was the best place for it. That. Rimuru knelt in front of her. Chloe, this was the happiest year I've ever had. That's. You are fun, funny, beautiful, and very cute. Everything about you makes me love you just like I know you love me too. Chloe could do nothing but stand there staring at him. Rimuru pulled a small box out of imaginary space and opened it. Beautiful. Chloe murmured seeing the ring inside. That ring is made with the two rarest stones in the universe, but it's not even 1% of its value to me. Chloe I want to spend the rest of my life with you. The ring was made with the universe stone he had just acquired and it was a beautiful shiny stone that Rimuru colored white which was Chloe's favorite color. And also on its tip instead of a diamond it had a soul pearl. This pearl was colorless in its normal state, but if you connected someone's soul to it the stone would begin to glow in a prism. The person would also have a connection to the stone so that they would always know where it was. Chloe was already shedding tears of joy at those words. Chloe Albert. Will you marry me? Yes. Yes. They kissed and Rimuru gave her the ring connected to his soul. This was probably the most beautiful ring there could be. And since Chloe had the ring connected to Rimuru's soul he could always know where she was and vice versa. He sat down on the grass and Chloe was wrapped around his waist as he lay on the fluffy grass. He was stroking her head as she smiled. Looks like the heroine has fallen into the clutches of an evil demon lord Hein. He spoke in a playful tone. Ehehe I think it was you who fell into my clutches. They exchanged jokes and then kissed once more. Some time passed. Rimuru promised to have the biggest wedding of all after he finds Shizu, so it would take quite a while to prepare. Chloe would tell her friends about the proposal whenever she could and show off the ring on her necklace. The one day Rimuru decided to go back to his other world to find Shizu, but he visited Chloe whenever he could and when he couldn't he would send voice messages through the soul ring saying, I love you or, I miss you. Then one day Chloe's ring lost its connection to Rimuru. She didn't despair because she knew that no matter what happened Rimuru would always return. She warned Rimuru's subordinates and they put themselves on alert. Chloe just in case asked Veldora if anything happened to Rimuru's soul. Veldora and Rimuru had a soul corridor so that if one died, the other could revive him. But Veldora said that Rimuru was alive and this reassured Chloe. 
But the strange thing was what happened one day later. Chloe's best friend Hanada disappeared. Some temple knights said they saw a magic circle appear under her and then she was gone. Chloe was worried, but thought the two disappearances might be related. Then a week later, Chloe was summoned. She was summoned by a golem with a little girl's voice. She asked Chloe to help kill some kind of god, but Chloe just said. Sorry, I have to find my beloved. Bye. Chloe went to the nearest town to get information from Rimuru. She found out that some people were summoned in the capital of that kingdom and that one of them was Rimuru. She also learned that he is not the best known of the group. This means that he is probably hiding his true identity as the Lord Demonio. She was heading towards the capital. She stopped to talk to some people, to learn more about this world. This pressure seemed very high by the standards of this world. This force in Chloe's world would be considered a pseudo-demon lord. She went towards this force and saw some refugees from the city. She asked what was happening in the city and they said that the heroes group was battling a powerful creature called the Reaper. When she heard from the hero group, Chloe almost jumped for joy. She asked if the one called Rimuru was also there for the woman who was talking to her, but the woman said. You say the one who is as strong as Hero. They say that his brother died in the Orcus dungeon and he went to search for his body. Rimuru told Chloe about this brother. He described him as a gentle and kind person. Chloe knew that Rimuru had several ways to revive someone, so he probably went to find his brother for that. She then realized that if Rimuru wasn't there, there was no way her colleagues could beat a pseudo-demon lord. She flew towards the fight as fast as possible. When she arrived the reaper had killed several people who appeared to be adventurers and had a man in knight's robe passed out. At least the students are okay, she thought. The reaper who could not detect her presence asked trying to hold back her surprise. Who are you? Chloe Albert. Hero. She spoke as she pulled out her sword. The students were perplexed. A girl in a mask appeared out of nowhere calling herself Hero. They thought the girl was going crazy, but the strangest thing was not that. The woman with a machete had implied that anyone who moved would die. Yet this girl casually drew her sword and kept walking. Why didn't the reaper move? Premonition. Her instincts were screaming. She looked at this masked woman and could only think of running away, but she knew that if she couldn't defeat them running away would be even harder. Coo. How can a human? Are you done yet? Good. Then let's go. She spoke in a calm, serene voice and attacked. Chloe was so fast that they only saw a figure. The reaper attacked with all her strength, but still she was unable to defend herself. Chloe's sword cut through the reaper's machete like butter and decapitated her. Chloe actually could have stopped time to kill her or she could have also been quick enough that the students didn't even see it. She just didn't do it because she wanted to look cool to Rimuru's classmates and it worked. The students could only watch in astonishment as Chloe killed the reaper. The reaper's body began to evaporate and left nothing behind. Who are you? Shizuku asked in astonishment. Chloe took off her mask and stored it in her space ring and spoke. Hi. I'm Chloe, nice to meet you, she spoke in a gentle tone. I feel like I've seen her somewhere, Chloe said to herself. All the students were staring at her again, but this time she didn't understand why. The reason they were staring was because this girl was beautiful. Some students had blood coming out of their noses. And even the girls were staring, especially Shizuku and Suzu. Suzu even let out a perverted voice and fell to the ground. HMPH. Kaori realized that everyone was staring and forced a cough, making everyone come back to their senses. Sorry for our rudeness. You said your name is Chloe, right? Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you. She gave a beautiful smile that made even Kaori blush. This girl was certainly on the same level, or even higher than Kaori and Shizuku. At this moment Kuki approached. Nice to meet you too Chloe, and thank you for your help. Kuki seemed kind of hesitant to say thank you, and he really was. He wanted to be a hero, the one who saved everyone from the villain, but he couldn't do anything when the Reaper started killing the adventurers and he still had to be saved by another hero. He was basically jealous, but it wouldn't be a right thing to feel that way about someone who saved him so he suppressed it all and thanked her. At this moment Shizuku came forward to speak. Ah forgive me for asking, but are you really of the hero class? We heard that this class is very rare and that there is no one but Kuki with this class in this world. Yes I am hero class, I heard that you are not from this world. I'm not either, but I don't want to talk about it. Well first I want you to do something for me. Something. 
Shizuku asked confused wondering what they could do for such a powerful person. Yes, I want you to hide my existence. I want you to say that it was you who defeated that woman. Otherwise the church will come after me and ask me to fight in the war and stuff like that. That's going to be very annoying. Chloe had already realized that this world was driven by religion and was at war because of it. So she wanted to stay out of it as much as possible. But for. Fine. Kuki didn't understand why such a powerful heroine didn't want to enter the war against the evil demons and wanted to ask. But Shizuku felt that this was none of their business and thought that this was the least they could do. So she interrupted Kuki. Okay. Thank you very much. You guys must be tired. You guys can take your shoes off a bit while we talk. What do you think? They headed into town for a better conversation. CH.15, The Wretched Rabbit. You, Hajime and Rimuru ended up in a cave. This cave was very well hidden as not even an iota of light could get in. Man. Why isn't there even an iota of light in here? Hajime spoke half irritated as he helped Rimuru break the rocks. Rimuru was using Black Thunder to break them and Hajime was using two new pistols, Donner and Schlag. Hajime's guns were much more powerful and much more stylish now. For Hajime and Rimuru this new ability to make artifacts was an otaku dream. They took all the ideas they got from movies, anime and manga and applied them in the best way possible. Seal also helped, Yu meanwhile looked at them with kind looks. So now Hajime had various weapons and other useful things in his treasure chest. Donner and Schlag. Incidentally Yu found something strange about the spells Rimuru was using. During training he even used lightning and black flames. Yu had never heard of such spells and one day he asked Rimuru to do a test with the black flames against the blue ones and the black ones outperformed by a lot. Since then he has been teaching Yu a few things. Finally. Bam Hajime kicked the last stone that was half loose away. Before Hajime probably wouldn't have had the strength to do this, but he repeatedly ate hydra meat while they were down there and it almost quadrupled his statuses. He also had some enchanted artifacts to give him more strength. Well. We've reached the surface. Rimuru spoke. Hajime and Yu were quite happy and kissed each other. Those two bastards flirting in front of me. Ah oh, I miss you Chloe, Shizu san. Rimuru thought looking at them. Where is this place? Rimuru wondered curiously. I've only read about it in books, but from the looks of it I think this is the Great Raisin Canyon. This was a large canyon that separated the north and south sides of the continent on the east side. It was said that powerful creatures existed here. I see. So where do you guys want to go now? Rimuru asked looking at Hajime and Yu. I'll go wherever Hajime wants. Yu spoke holding Hajime's arm. Well I want to let Shirasaki know that we are fine and also about Hayama, but I think we should take advantage that we are near the Haltina forest. They say there is one of the ten great dungeons there. Hajime spoke thoughtfully. He seemed to have felt Yu give his arm a strong squeeze when Hajime said, Shirasaki, but he thought it was his imagination. The reason Hajime wanted to warn her was that after he learned how worried she was about Hajime and that she even wanted to jump into the abyss together to save him, he felt kind of guilty for not caring about her more after he fell into the abyss. He also understood that she really cared about him. He also cared about her now and wanted to protect her from the person who had thrown him into the abyss by jealousy. Alright let's go for a walk in the forest then. Rimuru pulled his new hoverboard out of infinite space. This hoverboard was black with blue details. That was a rule that he and Hajime made. All of Hajime's things would have red details and Rimuru's things would have blue details. A flying skateboard was a man's romance so Rimuru and Hajime worked hard on it, but it turned out that only Rimuru could use it. The skateboard was powered by heat so Rimuru used his black flames to move it. Hajime was very jealous of him for this, but he vowed that one day he would also make one that could be used. By the way Yu could also use his blue flames to move him, but it spent a lot of mana and didn't have much speed. Rimuru also had his Flame Lord Amaterasu skill which was the supreme skill with the hottest black flames he could do. But he hadn't tested how fast he would go if he did that. Hajime took out his magic-powered motorcycle that fit three people. Suddenly Yu looked thoughtful and said something. Have you guys noticed? Eh? Hum? Yu formed a small flame in her hand. The flame seemed to be faulty, as it kept going out and on repeatedly. Ah oh yeah. I just remembered. That canyon nullifies 90% of the effectiveness of spells. 
Hajime said he had read that in some book and said to you as he stroked his head. You stay more on defense. You use more magic so save it. Wow. But, it's okay. This place is bad for mages. Leave it to us this time okay? N. Okay. D-O-P-A-N Hajime shot a monster that was behind you. It looked like a saber-toothed tiger. The monster's head exploded and it dropped dead. There were other monsters just like it behind him. They were confused by what happened, but went for the attack anyway. Rimuru pulled out his katana that glowed in a color that resembled a rainbow and set out to attack the monsters. Hajime pulled out his pistols and they started the killing spree. Rimuru cut a monster in half and swerved to the side. The place where he was just now was attacked by the monster, but when the monster took a leap Rimuru went to its side and cut off its head. He repeated the same with the other monsters, and Hajime. D-O-P-A-N-D-O-P-A-N-D-O-P-A-N he blew the monster's heads off easily, and those who could get close were kicked hard. They easily killed the monsters. After that they heard something coming from far away. It was a scream. There was a girl with rabbit ears and blue hair. She was running from a monster while screaming. Rabbit tribe? Are they native to this area? N-N. I've never heard of that. I wonder if she's not an exile, she might be a bad rabbit. Bad. Dot do. They were thinking that the Great Canyon Raisin was a way to send criminals to their deaths because of the strong monsters. The doe shouted, You guys have finally arrived. She said we have arrived, as if she knew we would be here. Yes. That's strange, let's see what she knows. The two spoke confused at the doe's words. The girl was running towards them so Hajime launched a shot to kill the monster. If it was the Hajime from before. At the time of the dungeon he probably could have just ignored Do on the brink of death, but the influence of Rimuru coming to his rescue made him no longer feel that he was alone in the world, so he was much kinder these days. The Do finally reached them and bowed deeply and said while breathing hard. Thank you for saving me, my name is Shia Haulia. Tap to retry connect to the internet to load media. She was about to continue speaking, but Hajime interrupted her. Hi. Pathetic existence with rabbit ears. Don't drag us into your stuff like that. Why did you lure that thing toward us? And how did you know we would be here? Go. Answer. Our Hajime-kun has to be kinder to people. Hajime and Rimuru looked like the good cop and bad cop interrogating a criminal. How can you be so rude to a beautiful girl like me? She spoke and put her hands on her cheeks trying to sensualize, but Hajime responded with. A. Eh? Pretty girl. Don't go calling yourself that. It's very embarrassing, you know. And don't try to seduce me. I already have a beautiful girlfriend. Hajime pointed at you next to him. And Rimuru said, It's really embarrassing to compliment yourself. The girl looked at you and then at herself and said, She's really beautiful, but she has no body. Look, I have a beautiful body. She's a plank. She's straight. She said this while pointing at you. She really was right. She had big breasts that were a provocative figure, she also had something that would stir a man's heart. Her beautiful rabbit ears. You answered the rabbit with. Windblade. Several windblades hit the doe, causing her to fall to the ground. You approached Hajime. Do you prefer big ones? She spoke this pointing to her breasts. Hajime had his thoughts in full swing thinking about what answer to give his beloved. He didn't want to lie, but he didn't want to hurt her either. Er. Well. That doesn't matter much. What matters is that it's the right person. Rimuru raised his thumb as if to say, great answer. And you seem to take that answer well. Wow you guys are so mean to me, please treat me better. Guaga. He helped me. A monster came out from behind a bush and was cut in half by Rimuru. The girl let out a miserable scream and went behind Hajime and you. Yo. Don't use us as a human shield without permission. He spoke and elbowed her in the head. No matter how you looked at it, it was a miserable girl being treated brutally. Ouch. Please listen to my story, she said, rolling on the floor in pain with her hands on her head. It was a pitiful scene. Okay. Let's go. Get up and start talking, you miserable rabbit I can't remember the name of. We don't have all the time in the world. How cruel. My name is Shay. Please don't forget. She spoke tearfully and then began to tell her story. The Haulia rabbit tribe had more than 100 people. They lived in peace in Fee Bagan, the main city of the Haltine Sea of Trees. The rabbit men were good at stealth and had excellent hearing, but were not good at fighting. 
They did not like to fight like the other tribes. Example. Bear men and tiger men compliments and etc. One day within this tribe. An abnormal girl was born. Rabbit men always had black or brown hair, but this girl had blue hair. She also had mana which was impossible for demi-humans and could manipulate it directly. The tribe was confused by the peculiar child. She was born with powers that normally only a magical beast would have and this would cause her to be discriminated against, but the rabbit tribe was a close-knit family and they took her in anyway. They hid her from the rest of the demi-humans because of discrimination and if this was discovered, it would be immediate execution. Sixteen years later they found out. However, the Halia tribe, wanting to avoid execution, fled from the city to the Sea of Trees. Others fled to the northern mountains to avoid the Empire soldiers who were hunting demi-humans for slaves in the Sea of Trees. However they were found by the Empire soldiers who cornered them and kidnapped their comrades. Several of them fled south and the special girl Shay couldn't stand to see her family suffer any longer and used her power future vision to find a way to save them. So I saw you with my power, but for some reason I didn't see him. She spoke pointing at Rimuru while making a confused expression. The likely reason she didn't see Rimuru was that temporal abilities don't work on those who can manipulate time. Please help my family, she healed herself deeply. Eh? Why would I do that? Come on people let's go. Hajime replied in a direct tone. Shay seeing that they were going to abandon her clung to Hajime's overcoat. No. Please. Who said you could hold on to me, huh? He used, flash cape, at a voltage that would paralyze her. Abababababa. She received the shock and her ears began to let out smoke. Hajime was about to turn around when he felt his sleeve being pulled once again. You are really tough Hein. Hajime spoke looking at Shay. Please. She pleaded with a tearful expression. Even Hajime hesitated when he saw her like that. Rimuru and Yu looked at each other as if they were thinking something and spoke. Hajime let's take her. Hajime kun let's help her. Shay's expression got all hopeful when she heard those words. Why is that? He asked confused. We need a guide in the sea of trees and she can do that in exchange for help, what do you think? Yu asked and Rimuru also seemed to agree with her. A guide was a demi-human. The Haltina forest had a mist that affected the senses of humans and demi-humans so they would get lost. However, demi-humans were immune to this mist. That's why the humans didn't attack them on their territory. Having an army of disordered people would be a big disadvantage. Hajime looked at the girl and spoke. Well it might be. You and Rimuru looked happy. Actually Rimuru would have helped even if Hajime didn't. This discrimination with Shay who had monster powers reminded Rimuru of his country that was made of monsters and he sympathized with her. There was also another reason. You and Rimuru had a conversation before they left the dungeon. Rimuru and she agreed that Hajime would have a sad life if he didn't care about anything or anyone and they would try to change that as much as possible. So even if the mist wasn't going to affect Rimuru they pretended to need Shay's help. Yes. Thank you very much. We will certainly guide you. She looked very happy and thanked them sternly. That said may I know your names. Rimuru. You. Hajime.